Okay, I don't give a if they don't have a clue. I want one. Give me a clue. Clues were not in the agreement. Hey guys, Chastity and Buddy here, and hey. we're back for American Gods episode two. And we're gonna break that down right now. But first, subscribe because that's how we have jobs. Thanks, we love you. Thank you. So before we get into this breakdown, um, I want to discuss something. I was wrong about the uh, the Eagle Standard thing. I don't really think it's my fault, but I mean, you guys are right. You guys are right. It's a totem pole. It's a freaking totem pole. <laughs> but look, look at an Eagle Standard and look at a totem pole. It's American gods. Right. Bro, bro, people can't do to be fair, I didn't back him up or correct him, but I also kind of just wanted to make him look bad in the comments, and I did. I look so bad on the whole <laughs> internet. All right, let's get anyway, into the show. Episode two, it's called The Secret of the Spoons. Where'd that name come from? So The Secret of the Spoons is the name of the song that Chernabog sings at the end of the episode while he's uh, he's beating Shadow at chess. Uh, to checkers. Checkers, you're right, you're right. Sorry guys, it's checkers, it's checkers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, and uh, I researched the song, took a little bit of time, found out uh, after that it's just a made-up song. They just made it up for the show and wanted him to sing something about stirring coffee. And... Sorry you did all that research. Yeah. Speaking of the music, yeah. you really liked the music in this episode, right? It was great. Um, so. There's only two really well-known songs. Uh, one is CCR, uh, Around the Bend, which is cool because they're driving. And there's a lot of references to, you know, um, leaving things behind. And I think that's a reference to what's going on in Shadow's life. And then the uh, the second song referenced is um, It's Hard Rain by, by Bob Dylan. And, I mean, there's references to, to lightning in it. There's references to, obviously, rain. It's... It's great. And also, like, it probably wasn't cheap for them to acquire those songs, so no, they probably, probably not. made sure the lyrics were on point. Yeah. We also didn't get that many answers in this episode yet, so you're still going to be very confused, which is okay. We're here to help you out. And also, there were a lot of strong messages about racism, starting uh -huh. right off the bat. So let's, let's talk about that Coming to America sequence with Anansi. Let me paint a picture of what's waiting for you on the show. So we see a Nancy, who we also know as Mr. Nancy in the book, and this is his first appearance, and this sequence was not in the book. Wasn't in the book. Um, I really, I mean, first of all, it's a, it's a hugely powerful sequence. He's, he's speaking in English. He's wearing kind of like a 70s style suit. Mm -hmm. um, Very sharp looking. He looks great. Yeah. He sounds great. He's super, super powerful. And I mean, I, I think that it was a direct representation of the gods not appearing as they're appearing to us. Hmm. Like, the gods, he's a god to them, you know. Anansi, Compe Anansi, is a spider god. He's the god that brought them stories, and he's a trickster, and he's, you know, an escape artist. The guy prays for him to help him free himself. And we I first see the spider, right? and then all of a sudden he appears as Mr. Nancy in the 70s garb, but we're not sure how they see him. Sure, right. sure. I think that he's appearing to them as maybe a man and a spider, but appearing to us completely different. Obviously, he's not speaking to them in English in 1679 or right. 97 or whatever it was. That's he's, for us. Probably. That's for us. Yeah, that's yeah. for us. And I think it's a direct metaphor of, like, what's going on with Shadow. Like, is Shadow seeing what's, you know, what whatever Shadow is seeing is probably different from what everybody sees when they're looking at the same thing that Shadow's seeing, um, because that's what gods are to people. The gods are a metaphor to people. Um, mm -hmm. The most confusing visual was that at the very end you see the spider, but you see the human body. So it's a spider for a head and then a human body. I was like, what am I looking at? That's interesting. This is a great sequence. Um, and at the end, uh, you know, the ship burns and all of the people that were following Anansi on that boat, uh, you know, all, all died. But Anansi makes it to the shores of America. Yeah, you see him crawling as a spider. And it's another origin story, another coming to America story that isn't a coming to America story of the people. Uh, but how the gods got there. How the gods got to America. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that just further shows that someone just needs to believe in them and then they appear there in America and that's how they get there. Yeah. Okay, I was just hijacked by a Tosken smoking punk in a virtual f***ing limo. Oh. Said to tell you that he's reprogrammed reality. Mm -mm -mm. What a little asshole. Shadow Moon is going through a lot of stuff right now. I mean, we're going through a lot of stuff. With uh, him. With yeah. him, yeah. Um, so he's hung from, from a tree in the last episode, and someone kills all of his attackers. There's no, 
there's no answers yet. Unless you've read the book, you probably can make some assumptions, but we're not going to do that. We're going just off the visuals of what we see. So he goes to the hospital, gets stapled up, and then confronts Wednesday about this. And, you know, Wednesday's like, you know, yelling about the new gods not having a clue. They don't have a clue. They don't have a clue they're messing with. And Shadow's like, I don't have a clue, dude. Give me a clue. And then he, he talks about being hung from a tree, being strange fruit. I didn't know what strange fruit was. Did you know what strange no. fruit was? Yeah. It's a reference to a poem um, and later uh, a Billie Holiday song about lynching that is, like, it's just another reference to a very strong racism reference in this in this show. And it, that it's, it's, it permeates and underlies, I mean, I think a lot of American culture, which is why they're referencing it so much in the show. Um, it was really, it was really subtle, and uh, I don't think it was in the book. I'm not sure. I don't recall it from the book. Not that part. Yeah. yeah. But he is starting to get clues of things being not what they seem, and just get cl clues of the gods existing. So he's starting to question reality. He thinks he's going crazy at first. He starts talking to media in the store. So that's when we are introduced to Gillian Anderson as media when he goes into the store, and then she appears on the TV screens because she has the power to do that. She can appear on any screen she wants. But he, she tries to recruit him and tries to offer him a job working for her, promises that she'll never hurt him. And he's just like, I'm talking to a TV, I'm nuts. I'm talking to I Love Lucy, this is really weird. And yeah. he tells Wednesday about that. He's like, I think I'm going insane. I think I'm going nuts, yeah. dude. I think I'm losing my mind. Well, when will you know for sure? I heard a guy's losing it when they get out. Are you trying to wiggle your way out of this job? He doesn't know what's going on, but then and then later on he sees Chernabog's hammer and he pictures blood on it, and he's just like, what is happening with my mind? Totally. So he's starting to get hints and clues about the gods without realizing what it is, and he's trying to make connections, but he's just like kind of going with it. He references a world beneath a world, yeah. and uh, we're starting to get to see that. A lot of people are talking about, I don't understand what's going on, like a lot of the comments are, I don't understand. I don't know if you're supposed to be able to understand. I mean, the gods, the different like understandings of the worlds of gods, all inter like Roman theology and Christian theology slamming together probably wouldn't make sense, you know? So all these things together... Um, it's gonna drive somebody a little crazy if they've never been introduced to it. He doesn't know our world. Best thing about these states we're headed towards, Minnesota, Wisconsin, that they have the kind of women that I loved when I was younger. So there are a lot of clues in this episode as to who Mr. Wednesday is, if you don't already know. Um, you'll find out if you watch the video about the old gods that I did, which kind of breaks this down, but I won't say it here. But there are definitely clues. So he does talk about how he was able to get that younger lady, and he said it took charm, and that charms can be learned, which is a very big clue. Very big clue. You know, Chernobog calls him uh, Votan, um, Wotan, that's, it's another name for him. Um, so if you don't want to get spoiled, you can do your own research. Um, you know, if you don't want to watch a show. Just keep watching the show. Just keep watching the show. <laughs> yeah, you'll figure it out soon enough. They're gonna, they're gonna lay it all out for you. Um, Mr. Wednesday's definitely in the middle of a fight, though. Mm -hmm. He's he seems to be afraid of anything new, um, and it's like newer than like the '70s. Like right. you know, um, in some cases, like cell phones, he won't do. Yeah. Uh, he prefers telegraph, which is like 1900s. <laughs> no one he, uses those. Yeah. What are you doing? How do you uh, even get a hold of him? That then? seems to be technology. Though. So I don't know. Maybe there's a god of that somewhere. Well, he, maybe because Technology Boy is attached to all of technology, and he's just like, no, get rid of this. He can track us with this. So he just throws Shadow's iPhone out the window. Why wouldn't Technical Boy be in charge of telegraphs, though? I mean, that's that's, that's technology. technology. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, highways. Uh, I mm -hmm. found it interesting that he didn't want to drive on highways. His his reasoning is that you get to see more pretty things, but I think that there's probably a highway god. I've dedicated many an yeah. hour on a highway. It's because you tell the prettiest lies. The truth is not what people want to hear. The prettiest woman, prettiest lies. So then we meet the Zoria sisters, who are fortune tellers, and they're also relatives of Chernobog, and they all live together. And there are three sisters, and we meet two of them, and one of them's in bed the entire time. We don't see her, but they are represented by the Morning Star, the Evening Star, and the Midnight Star. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we only see who we do, who do we first see? We see Utrinyaya yeah. and Virginyaya. Veteranyaya. Veteran Virgin. Yeah. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. She's my favorite, though. She's the best. She's the best. Um, she gives the best fortunes because she tells you what you want to hear. My sisters are garbage. <laughs> um, That's so, a fabulous Cloris Leachman, by the way. In Slavic <laughs> mythos, there's only two sisters. 
Uh, they're called the Aurora, and their job is to guard the doomsday dog that, that wants to eat the, the world and bring about doomsday. So they guard the gates against him, and that's a rad That's story. an important job. Yeah, yeah. You don't, don't want doomsday dog to eat the world. Don't let that dude eat the world. Uh, but Virgin Yaya is definitely my favorite god so far. She chugs vodka. She talks <laughs> crap on her sisters. It's She's amazing. She says tea sucks, which I agree with. Um, <laughs> So Uchren Yaya tips Shadow's cup over with coffee grounds and then makes like a ooh face. Mm -hmm. And uh, she shows it to her sister. Shows it to her sister. And I mean, what did you, I couldn't see anything in it. We looked together. She saw something It looked like an eagle, like the eagle from the intro sequence. That's the shape that I saw immediately when I first saw it. So I'm just interpreting it as an eagle. I don't know what it means, but that's what I saw it as. But apparently it's a bad sign because they were both like, ugh. Maybe his life's gonna turn out like crap, because that's what I saw. <laughs> Why is he in my home? Make him not be here, or I make him not be here. I already invite him for dinner. I cannot uninvite. So, Chernabog is played by Peter Stormare, who mm-hmm. is awesome. It's uh, fantastic. He was in Command and Conquer as uh, <laughs> Dr. Selinsky. Um, and I think that he, I mean, as always, is so fantastic at playing, you know, like a characterization of somebody from, from Europe. Um, <laughs> And he's kind of scary. Yes, he's very intimidating, but he's also got some playfulness to him. Mm-hmm. So he plays the game of checkers and, and keeps talking about his brother. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of a clue into how the gods are aging because he talks about them going gray and how he's kind of the dark god and then his brother is the light god. And then now they're like, oh, we're both kind of in this gray area. We do what we have to now that we're now mm-hmm. that we're less powerful than we were. Yeah, we're and losing so our god identity. The brother that he's alluding to is Bilabog, who, in if you saw in the old gods video we mentioned, is the god of light, and so they kind of contrast each other. And so Chernabog was just like, yeah, I kind of just took on this role because everyone thinks he's the good one. So I was like, I guess I'll be the bad one. So that's where he fits in, and now he's the god of darkness. Even gods don't <laughs> choose their, their role in life. Sometimes they just fake it till they make it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then we see Bilquis. So yeah. Bilquis is getting more of a role in this show, as we see, because she has a whole sequence here, and they show her with male and female counterparts. We only saw male ones in the book, so this is interesting. So it's just, no one is safe from Bill Quiz <laughs> and her love and being trapped into her world of space. I'm not safe. <laughs> anyway, so she goes to a museum, and then she checks out artifacts of the Oxmit Empire. So that empire is actually known to be the home of the Queen of Sheba and the Ark of the Covenant, which is very interesting. But she's supposed to be based on the Queen of Sheba, so that kind of makes sense. And then she looks at this jewelry, and it's the jewelry of the queen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what did you think of that? So I found it interesting that it was laying in like a certain position, and then she brings the the canvas up, or felt velvet, I don't know what it was, but she brings that up into the form of a female, and then as it lays back down, it's all in a different configuration. Mm-hmm. Like, she kind of knew how it was supposed to lay down. Yeah, it looked like she was having a memory of like wearing it. Well, yeah, maybe that of. was her. Maybe she knew they how it hers. laid. Yeah. Also, one thing, that jewelry didn't seem to fit a person that was standing up. It no, seemed like it was- Just for being fancy while you're laying down. <laughs> like laying down <laughs> in just a, like your back on the ground position. You know, got us a love <laughs> sure. style. Sure, why not? Okay, so speaking of Bilquis, we also have to talk about that crazy transition that happened before we got to her in this episode. We see the first conquest of Bilquis just hanging out, floating in space. Blinking. He's just alive because he blinks, so you see that he's still like conscious, but he's just hanging out there, floating in space forever. And then we kind of go through this nebula that looks kind of like a vagina. Kind of. It, it looks like one. And then we go through it, and then we go out into the room, and yes, it's back in Bilquis's room. So it's like from space right into her hoo-ha. That's the door. Right out. That's the door to eternity. From eternity out of a hoo-ha. Yes. It was amazing. It was a religious experience. <laughs> There's one other transition that I want to bring up that actually pissed me off a lot when I first saw it. <laughs> and then I realized later 
that it was referenced in the book. When Shadow pours soap into the bath, and then they do the, the sequence of, like, the bubbles and blah. Why did this like, bother you? <laughs> just because I was like, why are they wasting a B unit's time to, like, do, like, and then bubbles happen when he pours the blah. Because he's it, real dirty. He he's needs to <laughs> wash off. All, he, like, almost died, and there's blood all over him from fake... Droogs. You really are, you're real dirty. You really need to bath. You really need to bath. There's uh, droog blood all over. <laughs> I realize, though, that in the book, uh-huh. he talks about wanting a bath so bad. The first thing that he's going to do is going to go home mm-hmm. and take a bath. Okay. And I, I don't know if that's brought up in the first episode. I don't remember from the first episode, but I think that it was... He never said it. It was really an important por- part of his character and his, his like wants. And I think he, they made it like a ritual. You know, and I think that a lot of the the extra time in the show is spent on ritualistic, you know, things because that's basically what religions are. They're they're rituals, and I think to him, like this was something that he put a lot of uh, put a lot of time and thought into. So they they gave it a little extra time, just as a little little extra thing for for the people that read the book that were really thinking about it. Um, which I stopped being pissed off about that. There you go. Started being grateful. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Chastity, you should go watch all the things she's doing about American gods. She's she's covering our extra features, the new gods, the old gods. I don't know what you're going to do this week or next week or whatever, but you guys I, stay tuned. I think tuned. we're good on gods, but we'll figure it out. There's still some gods. Maybe. Guys, yeah. if we missed any gods, tell Chastity to make a show about <laughs> oh, <God>. it. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Subscribe. We love you. Bye.